Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 58 of my podcast. Thank you so, so much for being here. Welcome to any new viewers and a big welcome back to any returning viewers. Today is a rather dark, dreary, and drizzly Friday in May here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. We do have a Ravelry group for this podcast. That's where you'll find all of the show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. It's where you'll find giveaway stuff, knit along stuff, all kinds of other fun stuff. So go check that out and join if you haven't yet. Uh, we do have a giveaway happening this week. I'm so, so excited. It's it's for such an amazing kit that I'm really, really stoked to share with you guys. So I'm going to tell you about that straight away. So as you may have heard, um, Once Upon a Corgi, Soprano Knits, and The Corner of Craft have put together a kit a sock kit um, called the After the Rain Socks. Uh, that's the name of the pattern. It comes with yarn and a beautiful stitch marker. And they have so, so generously sent one to me. And um, I was really, really tempted to keep it for myself. I really want to knit these socks. The yarn is gorgeous. The stitch marker is so freaking cool. Um, but as you will see pretty soon in the upcoming um, moments, I have a bit of a problem with too many projects. <laughs> so I have decided to share it and give it away to one of you. Um, the actual kit itself is being released tomorrow, which is Saturday, May 26th, I think. Um, so I am gonna give this kit away now and uh, I will draw a winner the next episode. So head on over to the Ravelry group. There will be a thread open with a question to answer and this is what you can win. So this is a really gorgeous kit. The yarn is from Once Upon a Corgi and it's a Coriadel nylon base and the green is called Fiddleheads, the pink is called Puppy Paws and the pattern that you will get with this kit is called the After the Rain Socks designed by Becky Sorensen and then Hannah, pardon me, from the Corner of Craft has made this super freaking awesome little umbrella stitch marker. And this seriously goes perfect with today. So like I said, it's really drizzly out. Umbrellas, it is so cute, I love it. So if you would like to win the After the Rain sock kit, um, go on over to the Ravelry group, join the Ravelry group and uh, answer a question. It'll be easy, it'll be fun, it'll be informative. Um, and yeah, I am so, so excited to share this. This is such a cool kit. This is the second kit that them three have done together and both of them have been just freaking gorgeous. Um, so if you want to uh, get a kit yourself anyway um, and don't want to rely on having to win it, <laughs> Check out uh, Once Upon a Corgi tomorrow, so which is Saturday, because she will have kits up then. So, very cool, so excited for that. What am I wearing? I am wearing a finished object. So I am going to move straight into FOs for this week. I finished my Ramona cardigan. Uh, this is a cardigan by Elizabeth Smith. <laughs> and um, it's a top-down raglan cardigan and I used Barrett Woolco which is Susan B. Anderson's yarn company and it is so amazing and I love it so so much so I'm gonna stand up and show you and then I will talk a little bit about knitting it so here we go. Um, it is really gorgeous. I love it. As you can see, it is quite a bit longer than the pattern calls for. It's pretty much a waist length 
cardigan, but I like a longer cardigan. So I, I lengthened it by like six inches. So I really, really love it. And I am pregnant, in case you can't tell. <laughs> um, so that's what it looks like, and I seriously love this thing. I love the yarn. The pattern was so basic and simple and easy and just classic, and I love it. So I purchased the Barrett Wool Co. yarn at Stitches West in February. I bought four skeins. It's a worsted weight, worsted spun, American wool. And it's non-superwash. The base is called Home. And there's the tag. And here's what I have left over. So I bought four skeins and they are 230 yards a skein, 100 grams. And this is over half of the last skein that I have left. So I used up a pretty good amount of the yarn. Um, I did do some altering after the fact. So I wasn't sure if I would have enough yarn or not. Um, I got a smaller gauge than the pattern called for. I uh, used the same size needle that the pattern called for, but my yarn is a little bit thinner than the pattern recommended. The pattern recommends an Aran weight, um, and I think it, you can even use a bulky and get gauge. I used a worsted, and I got a much smaller gauge, so I used a size 9 for the body of this thing. And I just wasn't quite sure how it was gonna work out with the amount of yarn that I had. So I wanted to be safe. So I knew I wanted to make it longer than the pattern called for. I knit it probably a few inches longer than the pattern called for. And I tried it on and it looked fine. And so I bound off, I did the button bands, and then I did the sleeves. And I did full length sleeves and I had a ton of yarn left over. I had probably almost a full, what amounted to almost a full skein left over. And so I blocked it just to see how much it would grow because in the swatch that I did, I found that this yarn was gonna grow lengthwise a little bit. And it grew a little bit, but not a ton. And since I had so much yarn left over and I really love longer sweaters, I decided I wanted to add some length. So. My original plan was just to rip out the button bands and rip out the bind off, add some length and redo the button bands, but I kind of figured out a different solution. So what I did, is, and it was janky and it, it looks a little janky, but what I did is I, I ripped out the bind off on the bottom of the body. Now the way it works, and you'll be able to see what I did when I show you. So the way it works is you've got, you knit your body down and then you bind off. And then you pick up stitches and you knit the button band. So instead of ripping out the button band, I just ripped out my bind off, which used to be right here. And this is where my button band used to end, is right here. So I ripped out the bind off and just had a couple of live stitches on either end where the um, button band kind of attached to that first or last stitch or whatever. It was really, it was easy, but it sounds complicated. <laughs> so I ripped out the bind off, I picked up all my stitches, and I just knit an extra few inches. I ended up adding six inches to the overall length of the pattern. And when I was done with that, I rebound off. And then I had a longer body, but not longer button bands. So what I did is I picked up more stitches on the new length of the body and I knit outwards and as I went, I picked up a, one last stitch for every row from my old button band and it is not perfect <laughs> as you could probably tell, um, but I really don't care. I mean, if you have watched my podcast before, you probably 
know by now that I am not a perfectionist and I am super totally okay with it if uh, my garments have flaws. So they do. It looks a teeny bit wonky. The way I picked up the stitches as I was doing it, it's right there. I mean, it's it's weird looking, but like, whatever. I also have not re-blocked it. Uh, I feel like that will help. It does flare out a little bit at the bottom, um, which I actually kind of like, but I, I feel like with blocking, it'll, it'll even out a little bit. And even if it doesn't, I was really happy I did it because I was a little unhappy with the original length of it. It was just a little too short for me. I really, really, really like a sweater to cover my butt. And it's not because I don't like my butt. <laughs> it's just because that's the length of garment that I think I, that I like, that, um, that I think looks best on my body. I'm really short and I don't think that, I think that the tunic idea for a top looks best on me um, in a lot of situations with the way I dress. So anyway, I was really happy I did that. It was super finagly and <laughs> kind of crazy, uh, I felt like, but I was really, really happy I did it. So that was pretty much the only modification I made and the only weird thing I did. Um, since my, ga my gauge was smaller than the pattern recommended, but it was also pretty loose for this yarn. So it's a little, it's not exactly how the pattern wants it to be. I feel like the patterns or the projects that I've seen have been really um, kind of structured and this is definitely, the fabric is looser I feel like than a lot of the other projects I've seen. If you can tell the neckline isn't as like high up crew neck as a lot of the other projects that I've seen, which I really like. I really prefer a wider neckline than something too close to my throat. Um, I just, I don't know. I like wider necklines. Um, and I put on these plastic black buttons. I did have to buy buttons. I went to my local yarn and fabric shop, um, which I don't go to very often. They don't really carry a lot that I like, so I don't often shop there. Um, most of the yarn that they carry is like Cascade and a couple other commercial, not even, most of it's Cascade. They, they just don't focus that much on yarn. But uh, they do have a dinky kind of little button selection. So I went there, um, I found these plastic buttons, I bought like eight of them or nine of them or something, however many buttonholes I had, that's how many I got. And I sewed them on. And that was a labor of love, not because of anything weird just because I really dislike sewing on buttons. So I did it over a couple evenings and I got it done. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It's just like my least favorite part of the whole knitting process. And um, one of my least favorite parts, well, my least favorite part of knitting a cardigan is sewing on buttons. But I got them on and I'm really proud of myself. And I'm so, so happy this thing is done and it's super wearable and I really like it. And uh, I have been trying to knit things since I've been pregnant that I can actually wear now, which to me means all cardigans all the time. I have been so tempted by so many pullover patterns that have been coming out, but I have been strictly limiting myself to cardigans because I, I don't, I don't know. I want to be able to wear my stuff now, and I can wear a cardigan now. I just keep it open, and uh, it works just fine, but I'm getting pretty late in my pregnancy. I've got like two months to go-ish, so soon, soon I will be back to pullover land. I really want to knit the teg Tegna, 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 I don't know, whatever. Really, really want to make that, and there's just like so many other ones popping up right now that I want to make so bad, so... That's gonna happen in a couple months. In the meantime though, there are plenty of cardigans that I am knitting on, which you will see. Okay, so is that it for this? I loved it. I love the pattern. I seriously highly recommend it. There's a sport weight version, which I've talked about before, which I also want to knit. And yeah, I, I think you should check this pattern out if you're interested in this kind of style. I love it. 
love how it turned out. And it did not take as much yarn as I thought it would. This yarn too, if you're interested in checking it out, I really, really think you should. It's such gorgeous yarn. She, uh, Susan B. Anderson in the Barrett Wool Co. line also has a woolen spun yarn, which I'm dying to try too. So that is that. Moving on to whips. I have got kind of a lot of whips this week. I have had what you may know as cast on itis. I'm doing it. I've been casting stuff on. So the first thing that I've got on the needles is living in my Sugar Tots box bag. And this is a pair of baby socks. I am knitting, as per the suggestion of a viewer, thank you so much, the Rose City Rollers Littles Edition. So the Rose City Rollers is a shorty sock pattern um, by Catherine M Mara, Mara Cap, Mara Catherine Briner, <laughs> who um, is a really awesome pattern designer. I really, really like a lot of her stuff. And she put out the Rose City Rollers, which is a very cool sock pattern, and she put out a Littles edition for babies and kids. So I went and found some scrap yarn and cast a pair on. This is Stranded Dye Works, and I knit a pair of socks out of this last year. This is her Paradise Base, which is her cashmere base, and it's the Reef Dive colorway. So I have a bunch left over, so I'm knitting a pair of baby socks out of it, and... I don't have much so far, but there we go. That's what I've got. <laughs> I've got like an inch of cuff, um, and I am just about ready to start the heel, and I believe it's a heel flap and gusset called for in the pattern, probably, but um, yeah. I'm knitting these on a size one needle. These are my Haya Hayas, and I'm doing Magic Loop, because it's my favorite. And yeah, these are coming along. I Baby socks are super quick, and I really uh, had many intentions of knitting many baby socks uh, for my kid. This is my second pair so far, and she's due in two months. So we'll see how many more I can get. <laughs> I kind of had this idea, like, I am not buying commercial socks for my baby. Like, I'm going to knit all of them. This is only the second pair, so. She's going to be born in the summertime, though, so. It's cold here, though. We're not a, we're not a hot summer place here in uh, Humboldt County, Northern California, where I live. Um, but I am really enjoying this so far. This yarn is just lovely to work with. It's so soft and squishy, and baby's going to have some luxurious socks. So I am enjoying that. The next whip that I've got that is actually living in the same project bag is a pair of baby leg warmers that I decided to cast on. So a while ago, me and Caitlin of the Wool Jewel podcast did a swap, and she sent me uh, a mini skein of Malabrigo yarn, and it's Malabrigo Finito in the Lavanda colorway. And I decided to use that for these leg warmers, and... It is the most gorgeous yarn. Oh my gosh, you guys. Seriously, it's 100% wool. It says pure super fine merino wool. This seriously feels like it's got like some cashmere in it. It's so soft. I cannot even believe it. I love it. I have never used um, this line of Malabrigo before. Malabrigo yarns are typically pretty nice. And this is my first time using Finito, and it's freaking gorgeous. I love it. And it's this really pretty dark gray and purple colorway. So I am just kind of winging it. And... Here's the leg warmer. So what I did for these is just cast on 44 stitches for the cuff, and I used a 
What's that cast on that I use? German twisted cast on. I did a two by two ribbing on the cuff and then just it switched to stockinette. I am again using a size one high high needle magic loop and I just kind of knit for a little while until I felt like it was done and now I've got um, some ribbing going again. I'll do a little more ribbing and then bind off and then do a second one. So I think these are going to be fun. Baby leg warmers. They seem pretty practical mm -hmm. and they're super kid is going to be luxurious. This is so soft. Seriously. Like it feels like there's like silk or cashmere or something in it. And I love the color. It's a very dark tonal purple gray. So these have been super fun to work on because it's just a teeny bit of stock in it. And I like it. So, baby leg warmers. I'm not using a pattern for this. I just kind of winged it, and I think they'll be fine. Um, I I feel like leg warmers could be really useful for a kid, and I kind of want to make more as well. Maybe some like patterned ones or like cabled ones. I, I did look on Ravelry and I saw a lot of really cute ideas, uh, but I figured for this first one, I kind of just wanted to go vanilla. So that's what I'm doing. Yay, leg warmers. Up next is a pair of socks for me. Um, I have been working on the socks living in my Emerald Fibers project bag, which is a pair of Mondom socks. Now, this is Mondom yarn from Retro Zaria. And this is 100% Portuguese, Portuguese wool, fingering weight yarn. And this is what it looks like. This is colorway 207, and I love it. I love the colors in this, that like aqua-y teal with black and gray and purple and freaking like bubblegum pink. I love it. I love this yarn so much. It feels fantastic. It's it's wooly and beautiful. I love it. So I've got one done. That is my first sock. And I love the way it pulls. It does that kind of micro striping thing that some pulling yarns do. I adore it. So this is a 56 stitch count sock. I did the German twisted cast on two by two ribbing for the cuff and just a vanilla sock with the heel flap and gusset. And my very favorite toe that I do, which is a rounded toe with decreases spaced evenly around the toe with a flat toe. So I kitchener it before I get to a point. And I love it. It's the toe that fits me the best. Um, it is something that I made up, and if you would like to know how I do it or do it for yourself, there are notes on how I do it in my Pandora Socks project page on Ravelry, which I will link to in the show notes for this episode. I am knitting these for the um, Good Witch Knits Vanilla Sock Along, so go check that out at her podcast if you want to participate. I love knitting vanilla socks, so favorite kind of knit along. And... These socks are just wonderful. I seriously love how they feel. I love it, I love it. They are 100% wool. I am totally okay with that. I don't feel like I need nylon in my socks. So, awesome. This is the second one so far. I've got my Bee Progress Paper on here from Beehive Yarns. And I'm knitting these again on a size one. These are my Chiago Mini Twist Needles, which are my favorites for socks. I have just finished the heel flap and heel turn. I'm working on the gusset decreases right now. And come along. I love it. I, again, also really recommend this yarn. I'm loving it this yarn so much. I do have one other ball that I purchased. Um, you can purchase it from the Retrozaria online shop, 
which I will link to in the show notes. And uh, she's got all kinds of amazing colorways in this yarn. And I have one other one. And I want more. Definitely want more. So that is my current sock that I have going on right now. Now we are going to move into, what, shawl territory, kind of? So I <laughs> I got... I got a lot of stuff. I am working on, no, you know what? Before we get into shawl territory, I'm gonna show you this crazy new thing I'm doing. Is it in here? I think it's in here. Yeah. Okay, so this is a Fat Squirrel project bag. And it is housing some crochet. So, I am making the pattern called Connie's Ray of Hope. It's a, it's a mandala, I think it's. So from what I can understand, I'm not really a crocheter. I can crochet. My only other crochet project is the Granny Stripe Crochet Blanket, which is one single crochet stitch, which took me forever how to, to learn how to do. And um, that was the extent of my chronic crochet knowledge, pretty much. And then I saw this thing on Ravelry, and it was gorgeous. I love it. And I decided I really, really, really wanted to make it. I love that it's like a wall hanging, and that it like you have to do a hoop to attach it to, so that it's like rigid and sturdy. And I just fell in love with it, and I felt like I needed to make it. So I decided to figure out how to do it. Um, it is a free pattern. It was released originally as a crochet along and um, I actually did not write down any of the information. So I apologize. I don't have the designer's name or anything, but I'm going to put all that information here and in the show notes. Um, so I decided even though I did not know how to do, how to make one of these things or I'm not very uh, experienced at crochet either, I needed to make it because it's gorgeous. So I went on the internet and I purchased a metal hoop for it. And I also purchased a new crochet hook. So this is a four millimeter crochet hook and it is a tulip crochet hook. And for my very limited crochet needs, these are very satisfactory hooks. I quite enjoy them. So I bought this. I bought the hoop and I went stash diving and picked out a bunch of scraps. So the pattern calls for a D, there's a DK version and I think a worsted or an Aran version. I decided to do the DK version and most of my scraps are DK. Some of them are like heavy sports or whatever. So I'm going to show you what I have so far and then I'll show you some of the yarns. So this is my mandala so far, and I love it. I love it so much. Look at all these crazy freaking crochet, crochet stitches I learned how to do. What? Can you believe that? I cannot believe I did this. I'm like so impressed with myself. It was hard. <laughs> this is, crochet is hard. It's not hard, okay? It's not hard. It's hard to learn how to do, but knitting was hard to learn how to do too. It just, the time it took me to like, look up every single stitch and then not understand the description and so have to look it up somewhere else and find a video about it and not exactly find the exact video that I needed for the application that I needed just took forever and it reminded me so much of when I was first learning how to read a knitting pattern same exact things were happening back then years ago and it was just like flashback to these like first few actual knitted projects that I used patterns for in it being so hard to figure out what the F they were talking about in the pattern because <laughs> I did not know anything about it and I went through that all over again with this so the pattern is great I mean I think it's great I don't really I'm not used to crochet patterns but I've so far been able to understand it with a lot of thinking and mental power and looking things up on the internet, I have been able to figure it out. I might be doing some things wrong, I have no idea, but dang, this thing took a long time. And it was hard. And it was 
the labor of love. But I really, really like how it's turning out. So um, the way she released it was a crochet, a, like a mystery crochet along, I think. So it's done in clues. So this whole thing here is almost the first clue. I'm not done with the last round yet, which is this teal section, which is like, <laughs> see this tiny piece that I did here? That took like 45 minutes. <laughs> and I'm still not like, I'm still not through the whole like first repeat. I'm, I'm still figuring it out. But I started here. Uh, one of my favorite skills that I've learned so far doing this is how to join in the round, I guess. Like you can do a circle in crochet, right? And then I didn't really know that you could like join it and have it be smooth rather than have your first stitch, your last stitch, and then like a jog. So super cool. I'm stoked about that skill. I love it. And yeah, these are popcorn stitches, I think. I love it. It's so beautiful and I, it's gonna look so good when it's blocked and it's stretched in this like hoop frame. I cannot wait until it's done, I love it. I have a million ends to weave in. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, I am so proud of myself. This was so hard, <laughs> but I love it. I think it's turning out really, really beautifully. And I'm kind of just using colors as I go. I'm kind of picking what I want the next color to be. I got a ton of scraps in here. So kind of the first two main-ish colors I wanted to go with were these two. And these are both uh, DK weight leftovers that I have. This one is Madeline Tosh DK in the Celadon colorway. And I love this yarn. I used this to make a hat a while ago. And I, I've been like coveting this scrap these scraps. I love this yarn so much. This one is Yarn Indulgences. And I got this skein of yarn in a swap that I did years ago. And uh, it's Superwash Merino DK. Colorway is Gustav. And it's Yarn Indulgences. And I've ha I made actually the same exact hat <laughs> in this yarn as I did in this yarn. And um, these are my leftovers from that. So those two have been incorporated into this thing so far. I've also incorporated my Moonstone Diorix leftovers. This is my Polworth DK base in the um, Frostbite colorway. It's one of my Christmas colorways. <laughs> Um, so I've been using that. I also have used a little bit of this. And this is a fingering weight, but this is a really plump, heavy fingering weight yarn. And this one is Morning Bright Yarns Cotton Candy. And it is an 80-20 Merino Nylon Certified Organic Merino. So I've also got like, this is some Green Mountain Spinnery. This is a sport weight. And I've got some hand spun floating around in here. These were two tiny little braids that I spun up a while ago that I've got in here. And here's some more hand spun. And I've got one of my favorite yarns that I think I've ever used. I've got in there too. It was this. And a long time ago in one of my early episodes, I knit this into a pair of mittens. And this is Madeline Tosh, some of her like farm wool line, and it's a sport weight. I don't remember what kind of wool it is, but it's 100% like farm wool. And it's gorgeous. And it's rose colored glasses, I think is the name of the colorway, but it's just a really gently speckled hot pink and gray yarn. Oh, I, I just love it. And this has gone into it already. Um, this is some very old stash. It is something that I actually won from one of my old local yarn stores that is no longer in business. And it's alchemy yarns. 
which I've never been that interested in Alchemy Yarns. Um, they're like a super luxury brand. They do a lot of silks, a lot of, let's see, what is this? This is silk, mohair, wool, and cotton. And that's their tag. It's called Cosmos is the base. And um, this, this yarn is like crazy. This is like a 50 gram skein and it costs like $40 or something. <laughs> and I won it and I won it already caked up um, and I have never known what to do with it. Um, I think they call it like an Aran, but it, it's like, it's pretty thin. I feel like it's more like a sport, like a floofy sport. So I figure maybe some of this can go in here. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just have a bunch of stuff in here and it's going to get a lot bigger. There are three clues. This is most of clue one and I am so into it. Once I get like, cause you do each row or round. Each round is a different thing. You do a different thing in each round. And once I get it down, what I'm doing for that round, it's really simple and really easy and really fun. I am enjoying crochet so much. Once I get past the part where I don't know what I'm doing and I get it, it's like, I cannot believe how much fun I'm having. I love it. I love it. I'm just loving crocheting. So that's it. Connie's Ray of Hope. It's a mandala. I have been kind of ravelry stocking other crochet patterns. I like the idea of a mandala. Um, I don't, I think the idea of a mandala in crochet, from what I can tell anyway, I have no idea, but I think it's this idea where you do a flat circle with different things in all the rounds so that it's like, kind of varied, you know, it's not just a single stitch. And people seem to use them for different things. Wall hangings, um, I've seen a really cool idea. A lot of patterns do these like mandala dusters, which <laughs> they make a giant one, like a person sized one, like a giant pie shawl sized one, and then put two holes right at the top middle-ish part for your arms. And you wear it like a, like a vest. I think that is super cool. I may get there one day, but there's some really, really cool ones. So who knows? Who knows how long this crochet bug's gonna last, but I'm really enjoying it right now. I, I hope I can get to the point where I kind of know what I'm doing and I don't have to constantly look at instructions because I feel like that is gonna be even more fun than how it is now. So that's my crochet for the week. Is that gonna be a regular thing from now on? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I go through phases, you guys. I don't know if you've noticed that about me, but I pick up things, I get really into them, and then I drop them. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how long this lasts. Um, I hope I continue to really enjoy it because right now it's so fun. And I feel like it's going to, like I said, get even more fun once I know what I'm doing and I don't have to look everything up every five seconds. So we'll see where that goes. On to my shawl madness section. It's not madness, I've got two. Um, the first one you have seen before, it's the Hansel Hap. And yeah, I'm considering it a shawl, even though I'm using it as a baby blanket. It is living in my Gasly's project bag, which is my favorite. And I have gotten pretty far. So last time I shared this with you, I was working on the center square and I have since doo, 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 finished that and picked up all the stitches for the border. So let's see if I can do this without losing the stitches. So that's what it looks like now. It's in blob, in the blob stage, but the center square is done and I have started doing the lace border. So it's still a lot of fun and I really like it. The center square is Moonstone Dye Works in my natural merino base, which is my 100% non-superwash Falkland organic merino wool, and it's just undyed. The border, I am using Nunaba yarns, and this is white gum wool 
and they're both fingering weight and this is a gradient. So generally with the Hansel Hap pattern, it calls for the border to be done in several different colorways and you stripe them. I had this and I felt like I wanted to use it, so I used I'm using a gradient. We'll see how it turns out. I don't really know. I think it's gonna look pretty good. Um, so I'm starting at this beigey brownie section. It's gonna move into this silver gray and then into a pink. If I don't have enough yarn here, I do have a second cake of it. It comes caked up like this, so I can always break into that and do an extra long pink section at the end. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but here is the tag for Nunaba. She dyes really, really gorgeous yarn, and I believe she dyes all on the white gumball. And it's the St. Gillian colorway. And this thing is super easy, super intuitive, really simple. The lace repeat is, oopsies, here go my stitches. Um, the lace repeat is like one lace round with a bunch of other knit and purl rounds. So it's like crazy simple and I'm really, really digging it. I think this is like, I want to say a feather and fan or like a shell kind of pattern, but I, and don't listen to me, I don't really know actually. <laughs> but I really love the way it's turning out. I think it's really beautiful. I can't wait until the colors start progressing and I am having a lot of fun with this project. I've always wanted to make a proper square half like this and I'm stoked. I'm stoked on it. And like I said, it is going to be a baby blanket. So we'll see how that goes. I know it is white and it is non-superwash. The both yarns are non-superwash. But um, you know, it'll go how it goes. <laughs> we'll see. I know babies can be messy and uh this is white, you can't throw it in the washing machine, but I don't really care. Things are gonna get messy. I'm okay with that. I'm not too precious with my stuff, my knitwear or anything. I am knitting this on the recommended needle size, which is a US 8 on my Haya Haya interchangeable set. And it's beautiful. I love this pattern. It is by Gudrun Johnston. Sorry, I did not say that before. So that's a big giant shawl that I'm really enjoying. My last project on the needles and my brand new shawl cast on for myself. I am so, it's in this bag. I'm so excited about it. I have been wanting to knit this thing for so long. It's in another Fat Squirrel project bag, of course. This thing is huge. There's a lot of stuff in this bag. So I am knitting the Ohm Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And the Ohm Shawl is a gigantic rectangular wrap knit in worsted or Aran weight yarn. And I'm so excited about it. So this is what I've got going on so far. And this is the full length of it here. I have got this on my Licka needles from my interchangeable set. It's the US 10 and a half is what I'm using. That's what the pattern calls for. I, of course, got my Sugar Tots Narwhal on it. And it is absolutely lovely. So the way that this thing goes is you use four colors. The main color is the kind of giant center panel. And then you have three contrasting colors that make up stripes on either end. And each of those stripes is textured and then there's a little bit of color work too. And, oh, I'm so excited. So I'm gonna show you a close up of the texture. So the bottom one is like a nice diamond textured pattern. And then this top one has, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's got like directional kind of like arrowy things. And I really like it. It's super, super fun to knit on. I will show you the yarn I'm using. I gotta say, I'm a little scared of color work flat. I love doing color work, stranded color work, uh, but I've only ever done it in the round. I don't know if I'm gonna love doing it flat, which I'm pretty sure is the called for technique. I haven't actually read that far ahead in the pattern, um, but just looking at it, I'm pretty sure it's color work flat. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, 
the yarns that I'm using. So far, the ones that I've got on the needles are these two. So this one is a 100% Coriadale mill spun yarn from a sheep called Violette, I think. Let's see. My bag is so full of stuff. Okay. Violet. 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 It's a worsted weight. And the farm that the fleece came from is Whitefish Bay Farm. And this was sent to me in a swap quite a long time ago. And I've been aching to use it ever since. I've had it caked up and have tried using it in several different patterns and have never been happy with the pattern yarn combination. So I've always ripped it out and it's just like, I want it, I've been wanting to use it so bad and I finally found the right pattern for it and I love it in this pattern. So that is this first bottom color. And then the pink is Soft Donegal by Studio Donegal. And this is a worsted to Aran White yarn from Ireland. And I picked this up at Stitches West maybe about four years ago. And this is another yarn that's been sitting in my scrap stash caked up because like this yarn, and I've tried to use them together before, it, I was so excited about it. I wound it up and I wanted to use it, but it never worked with what I tried to use it for. So it's been sitting caked up forever and I'm really really happy with this application. I know this one's gonna work out. Both of these have had such hard lives because they've both been knit into so many things and then ripped out again but um this is it. This is it for these yarns. I know it. I got a feeling it's working out great and um this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. I love this color and it's, it's this lavender with aqua and like darker pink and white tweedy flex. It's just so pretty and it's really super duper soft. And for the next two contrasting colors, I am using some Harrisville Designs Highland Worsted, which is a wool and spun worsted weight yarn. And um, I bought a bunch of this when I knit my You Sold the Teague uh, colorwork pullover a few months ago. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> um, I knit that pullover out of this yarn and I bought kind of a bunch of different, a few different colors to play with. And these were the ones that I have left. So it's 100% pure virgin wool, worsted weight, wool and spun. So these are going to be my next two contrast colors. And I think they're going to look really, really good with that. So those are my contrast colors. The main color that it calls for, it calls for like 600 yards. But what it calls for you doing is doing the main color in the middle and then on both ends as well. And of course, I did not want to buy yarn. I wanted to use stash. So I decided that, well, I didn't have enough of anything for that main middle color. So I have got more Harrisville designs. This is the other yarn that I used as a contrast color in that same You Sold a Teague sweater. And then this is another skein that I purchased in that like lump of purchasing from Harrisville designs, um, which is just a slightly darker shade than this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two as the main color. I'm going to stripe them throughout the middle. And then this is not enough. This is only about 400 yards instead of 600. So for the end pieces, which is supposed to be that main color, that's what this is for. So I'm hoping I have enough yarn. If I don't, I will add a little more striping into this section with this yarn which is also in my scrap stash. This is, it looks pretty similar. I mean, the construction of it is pretty different, but the color is, I feel like if I stripe it in, it's gonna be fine. This one is Swan's Island 
worsted. And these are, this is a leftover from a cowl that I knit years and years and years ago. This is delicious yarn. So that's my plan. I'm going to wing it, see how it goes, and I think it's going to be awesome. So yes, I'm striping these two for the main color, and I really love this Harrisville Designs yarn. And I think this, this project is going to use up the rest of all of the Harrisville Designs that I bought for that sweater. With one exception, um, the main like purple contrast color from that sweater, I still have um, probably like a half a cake left. So that'll be for something else. But I'm really happy to use all this because I bought it all and <laughs> now I'm being able to um, put it to use. And I am having so much fun working on this. It's on big fat needles, it's worsted weight yarn, and these rows are long and it's gonna be a huge wrap, but it's fun and it's simple and I think it's going to go by pretty quick because of those big needle, big yarn things. And I just think it's gorgeous. I have always wanted to knit this shawl and I'm so, I, I've tried picking out yarn from my stash before to kind of like scrap together something. And this is the first time I feel successful in doing that. So I think it's going to look really, really good. I think it's going to be super big and squishy and wooly and wonderful. All of this yarn is like wooly non superwash stuff. and. It. Um, I think with the exception of this bottom one, I think it's all wool and spun and I'm just stoked. It, there is a fingering weight version of this shawl as well that I've also always kind of wanted to make. The, what I like about the worsted weight one though is that the sections are broken up in such a way to where it really accentuates using different colors. The fingering weight version is designed all in one color and um, the patterning, like the texture patterning is different to where it, it really, I feel like probably does accentuate the single color. And I have so much more fun when I'm working on a giant shawl or wrap or something when there's more than one color involved. It's just something I've learned about myself. There are so many single color giant shawls out there that I think are gorgeous, but I always shy away from knitting them because I know that I am so much more entertained when I'm knitting something that giant when there's more than one color. So I love it. I am knitting such seasonally inappropriate things right now. <laughs> this is a gigantic worsted air and weight wrap and it is about to be summer, but like I have um, said, our summers are not that hot. So I don't really care. I think it's gonna be awesome. I love this thing so much. I've really, really been enjoying working on it. I can't wait to get to the next color. I still have to cake up the two next contrasting colors, so I have to do that first. Okay, that is all of my active knitting. Mostly. Uh, next, I will move on to shop update. I do have a couple of announcements about the shop, which is Moonstone Dye Works, my hand dyed yarn company. You can find a link down below in the information box to moonstonedyeworks.com and that'll get you to the Etsy shop if you're interested in checking any of this out. Um, I am going to be due to give birth in late July. It is now late May. So I've got about two months left and I am going to continue working on Moonstone Dye Works uh, for a little while until I feel like I'm done. I don't know exactly how long I'm going to be doing it yet, um, but I'm just going to kind of feel it out, see how it goes before I take um, some maternity leave from Moonstone Dye Works. So at some point I will stop dying for a little while, stop putting up listings, and I will be taking a break from it. Until then, what I've decided to do is instead of doing regular shop updates, I have decided to open up my shop to pre-orders. So. I have listed in the Moonstone Dye Works shop, and it's all up right now, uh, pre-orders for most all of my regular colorways on all of my regular bases. So if there is anything that you have ever wanted <laughs> that is a regular colorway, 
um, you can get it now. Uh, you can get any of the colorways listed on any of the bases listed. So I've got the BFL sock, Stellina sock, Merino single, natural Merino, and Merino DK available right now. So in any quantity that you want, um, yeah, you do a pre-order and pick out what you want and it I'm giving myself the timeline of two to five weeks to get your order dyed up for you and shipped out and so I'm gonna leave those pre-orders up for a little while I don't know exactly how long yet uh, once I feel like I get enough orders to w for what I can handle before I stop dying then I'll shut them down but I'll give you some notice and as for right now they're up indefinitely so if you're interested in getting the colorway of your choice on the base of your choice and the quantity of your choice, go check out Moonstone Dye Works on Etsy and uh, see if there's anything you like. Uh, I thought it would be a fun thing to do because I'm going to be I'm going to be stopping dying for a little while to kind of give you the opportunity if you want anything to get exactly what you want in the exact amount that you want it. If you are interested, uh, go check that out, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, too. That is it for shop update. Uh, now I will move on to favorites, and I have got one favorite this week, and I am cheating by putting it in favorites and not in knitting because it is another sweater kind of cast on. So. Hohi Locatelli has been teasing this like a cloud cardigan for like ever. <laughs> I've been dying to make it, just like dying to make it ever since I first saw it. I think I first saw it on the Grocery Girls when one of them started knitting theirs a while back. But the like a cloud sweater pattern is a pattern that Hohi Locatelli wrote and released initially for Helen Stewart's bath retreat and it was exclusive to them for a little while, and she never said when she was going to actually release it to the public, but that she was eventually going to release it to the public. I've been literally waiting. I look at Ravelry every single day waiting for this pattern to come out because I wanted it, it so bad. And I had yarn picked out from my stash and everything, and finally, yesterday, yesterday, I was on Instagram, and the first thing that popped up, like I had already checked Ravelry that day to see if the pattern had come out yet, but several hours later I went on Instagram and she announced it was released. I was like, oh! <laughs> I went over to Ravelry and I like bought it immediately. So I am going to be knitting the Like a Cloud pullover. I love it so much, so much. It calls for two lace weight strands held together to create like a fingering weight. Um, it calls for an alpaca blend and a mohair, a mohair silk blend. Now, I am pretty interested in this whole mohair silk blend thing that like a lot of people are interested in right now. I'm tempted, but I have not done it. And I am still restraining myself because I am a gigantic wimp when it comes to mohair. I've never tried knitting with that like mohair silk lace weight stuff that is very popular. But I have knit with mohair blends and every time I do, I get mad, <laughs> irritated, and it's horrible and I hate it. And it's because mohair is so floofy and there's so many flyaways. It's the type of yarn that in my experience is the kind that gets where fibers get in my eyes and my nose and my mouth as I'm knitting it and I cannot handle that. I just can't. It bugs the it bugs me. It I can't do it. I get so annoyed. I had the last mohair I tried to knit with was this Madeline Tosh wool mohair blend which was a fingering weight yarn and if you remember Back earlier this year, or maybe late last year, I cast on um, a mitten pattern by Ellie of Skein Deer called the, I can't remember what they were called, but they had deers on them. 
they were the deer mittens. And I had these two colors of Madeline Tosh mohair wool blend yarn. And so I was using that to knit those mittens. I, heart, I got like halfway through a cuff and I was like, can't do it. I, those are still sitting in my project bag. And it's not because the pattern isn't amazing and wonderful and so cool. It's because I can't handle the mohair. I just could not do it. So I am not doing it with mohair. I will show you what I'm doing it with because I have everything all ready to go in my fat squirrel bag. Okay. I'm so excited about this, can you tell? So the yarn that I've picked for my stash are these two lace weight yarns. And these have both been in my stash forever. I'm so excited to use them. So this top one, this beautiful freaking pale mauvey pinky lavendery gorgeousness is It's Rowan Fine Lace, and I have had this in my stash for so long. This came from back in my days before I knew how to really buy yarn, when I was kind of a, a new beginning knitter, and I was starting to experiment with like nicer yarns, and I only ever bought through webs, and I never bought with anything in mind. I just like was like I gotta have it and I was experimenting pretty much with yarn. I bought three balls of Rowan Fine Lace in this gorgeous freaking color and they've been sitting in my stash ever since because I have no idea what to do with it. I don't knit lace weight all that often. And this is 80% baby Surrey alpaca, 20% fine merino wool and the colorway is antique. Now. This is also very fuzzy. So the pattern also, it calls for a mohair silk blend, but it also calls for an alpaca wool blend. And if you can see the halo on that, it is pretty halo-y. It's a really beautiful yarn, but it also has a lot of flyaways. I have started swatching, which I will show you in a minute. <clears throat> and based on my swatch, I think I'm gonna have a similar issue with this alpaca yarn. I don't often use alpaca yarn. And I'm remembering that it's for the same reason I don't use mohair. <laughs> but you know what? Whatever. I've picked my yarn. It's stash yarn. I got it. I want to use it. And it's beautiful. So I'm going to try to muscle through it. I have, you may have seen me in the past, knit with surgical masks on. And that's why I do it. Is because the flyaways, like, even now I'm like, I feel like I'm breathing it in. Um... I'm gonna make my way through it because I, it's just so pretty. Look at that, I love it. This color is just like my favorite. So this came in three balls, like those kind of flattened balls that some yarn, like commercial yarns come in. And I despise knitting from those. So I caked them up into this one big cake. Um, so I have, a little less than 150 grams. I did break into this yarn at one point when I was knitting my Marled Magic Shawl. So I have less than what I originally had, which is a shame because it's less than what the pattern calls for. But we'll get to that too. So I've got like 126 grams of this or something like that. And I'm supposed to have about 1200 yards, I think, of each of these lace weight yarns. I think I have about 1100 yards of this if my math is correct. The other yarn that I have picked out from my stash is this gorgeous piece of awesome. This is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Lace, and it is 100% superwash merino wool. So I'm doing an alpaca wool blend with a wool. And this is 950 yards, 115 grams of lace weight yarn. So like I said, I'm supposed to have about 1,200 yards of each. I have about 1,000 yards of one. Is that what I said I had? I think 1,100 or something yards of one and 950 yards of the other. So we're going to see how it goes. <laughs> um, I have this bad habit of doing that where I don't have quite enough yarn, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I have looked it up on Ravelry, and there are a couple of people with D stashes for both of these yarns in these colorways. Probably different dial-outs. I don't really care. 
So if I run out of yarn, I'm just gonna go de-stashing and buy some more from someone else. I think that's my plan. So this is in the Gossamer colorway. And I have used the Gossamer colorway before in a shawl that I made a long time ago. And I love this. It, Gossamer is one of my favorite Madeline Tosh colorways. I love it. It's this really gorgeous pale tonal gray with lavender undertones. It's, I think that these two colors, just in general, are my two very favorite colors of all time. I love gray and I love pinks and purples. And this is my kind of perfect shade of like grayish, pale purple, lavender, pinkish. It's on the mauve spectrum, and this is my kind of mauve, like, for sure. And then, of course, I love gray. And I love gray with a lavender undertone. Oh, I just love them together so much. Don't cry. <laughs> so I immediately bought the pattern. I immediately got out my yarn and caked it up. I immediately got out some needles and started swatching. So I don't normally show my swatches in progress, but I'm so excited about this one that I am doing it. This is what I have so far. And it's a really simple, easy texture pattern. The pattern calls for size four needles, and that's what I'm swatching on to start with. They are my Luka interchangeable needles, and I think these two yarns are looking so good together. It's a really, really subtle marl, which is really what I was interested in. And I'm super excited. I'm super excited. I do have another Hohi Locatelli sweater on the needles that I have not touched in a few weeks. And it is funnily enough, also a fingering white cardigan that is in almost the same exact color. So variety is the spice of life. Whatever. I am so stoked on this. I love this cardigan. I love how it's shaped. It's open. It doesn't have a button band. It's got this really cool like V kind of detail on the back neck. Uh, what I really love about it is that it's got drop shoulders. I love drop shoulders. I have knit one other pullover with drop shoulders before and I'm in love with it. I love the construction. I love actually knitting it. I love how it fits on me. I love how it looks. I adore drop shoulders and I need to knit more. So when I saw this, I was just like, heck yeah, I'm knitting that. And now I get to. So swatching has commenced. I cannot wait to cast this thing on for real. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about the pattern and my yarn. I just can't stop looking at it. I love it. I'm done. That is everything I have for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please feel free to subscribe if you have not yet and give it a thumbs up if you feel so inclined. Join the Ravelry group. Join the giveaway if you're interested in winning that amazing sock collaboration. Have a nice rest of your May. I won't see you until June, so I won't see you until after my birthday. Uh, my birthday is coming up in a week. It's a week from yesterday on May 31st, and I will be turning 35, and I cannot wait. I love my birthday, and I'm so stoked about it. So until I see you again in a couple of weeks, have fun and stay awesome. Bye, you guys.